Himalayan salt doesn't actually come from the Himalayas. It's mined 186 miles away in Pakistan. Thanks to its pink hue and supposed health benefits, the salt has exploded in popularity since the late 2000s. Today, it's turned into lamps, statues, and of course, table salt. But extracting the coveted salt means descending into dark caves, then blasting and carrying heavy rock. Okay, we have a problem with the mines, the blocks, the sizes. Basically, we don't have so good facilities in our mines that we can extract the blocks very well. We went inside the mine, turning this mountain into 400,000 tons of pink salt each year. The Keoda salt mine, here in the Punjab region of Pakistan, is the second largest salt mine in the world. The pink salt comes from remnants of ancient seabeds that crystallized 600 million years ago. Legend has it, it was actually Alexander the Great's horse that first discovered these salt rocks when it stopped to take a lick. Then, under British rule, salt mining ramped up in the 1870s. Today, it's a popular tourist destination and a working mine, producing the majority of the world's pink salt. All the mining starts here, at the train station. This train takes miners deep into the mountain. Here, tunnels stretch for 25 miles, and it's always 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Mine ke total is 17 level. It's 70 level. Five level is on the top. The third is ground floor, and the third is below. 300 miners work these dark chambers. They've used many of the same mining tools for over a century. Pickaxes, hand drills, and gunpowder. First of all, we have drilling. Drilling is done hand and we have done it with the hand. After that, we have done it with packing. After that, we have done it with safety fuse. After that, we have done it with salt and blasting. Let's get the news on the set. Let's get the news on the set. After that, we have a safe time for half an hour. Miners will spend up to eight hours underground at a time. Only half of the mountain salt is actually mined. The rest is used for structural support, so the chambers don't collapse. Tractors haul the mined salt out of the mountain. Each day, miners excavate over a thousand tons of salt or about the weight of 157 elephants. Outside, they search for blocks with the best shape and coloring to send to manufacturers. Once picked, the blocks are loaded up on trucks, either by hand or crane, and sent across Pakistan. Historically, Pakistan couldn't process this raw pink salt, so much of it was exported to India cheaply. India would treat the salt, label it as made in India, and sell it at a premium. Pakistan saw little of the profits. NPR reported that a ton of salt sold to India for $40 could fetch $300 in Europe. In 2019, a social media campaign calling for the end of salt exports to India went viral. That same year, the Pakistani government banned all salt exports to India. The goal? Returning the profits to Pakistan. 23% of the rock salt manufacturing or production of Pakistan, we export to India in raw form. Which then was re-exported in the overseas, in the same market where we are already exporting right now. The government's decision is very useful for us. But some Pakistani salt exporters suffered. They didn't speak English and couldn't meet Europe's tough import standards. Only about a dozen exporters saw an opportunity to sell products under Pakistani labels directly to Europe. Mohammed was one of them. Every month, he purchases 300 tons of salt from the mine for his company, Himalayan Decor International. Kheora Mines is loaded with salt from the Kheora Mines, and it's loaded with salt from the Kheora Mines, and it's loaded with salt from the Kheora Mines. Our factory is on the Kana Defense Road, which is made of 300 km. His artists turn these blocks into more than 200 different products. Like a natural salt lamp, with geometrical shapes, animal link salt, eating cooking plates, इसके साथ साथ वॉल्स की जो उसी टाइल्स होती हैं वो हम लोग बना रहे हैं इसके साथ हम लोग ईटिंग सॉल्ट के अंदर काम कर रहे हैं काफी सारा। Most of the work is done by hand, but drills and saws have sped up the process in recent years. उसके बाद उसकी क्वालिटी को चेक किया जाता है, चेक करने के बाद उसकी वॉशिंग होती है, वॉशिंग के बाद उसके अंदर बल्ब और उसके अंदर वुडन बेस इंस्टॉल कर over in Karachi, RM Salt Pakistan grinds up blocks into table salt. Basically, this is the raw material, which you can see in different sizes. Here are some ranges, 2 to 3 kg, 
थ्री टू फाइव के जी और ये हमारी लार्ज साइड पर आ जाता है जैसे नाइन टू ट्वेल्व हो गया और ट्वेल्व टू फिफ्टीन के जी हो गया ये रेंजेस में होते हैं बेसिकली Blocks are fed into the grinder and broken down into smaller grains. Workers bag and weigh a thousand of these pouches of pink salt every hour. Like Muhammad's factory, RM Salt also makes lamps and other specialty products. After the raw material we get, we convert it with a different shape as per our order. Like you can see in the cutting machine, he is cutting different sizes. On this saw, water prevents dust from flying up, but on the grinders, it's not possible. Which is why Muhammad's staff wore masks even before the pandemic. Over at RM Salt, as you can see, this facility, we have installed a vacuum through which we can uh, absorb the dust. This is the order of USA, one of our client. We are making these goods for them, the moon shape and the heart shape as well. Double drill के बाद हम लोग इसको washing process से गुजारते हैं। क्यों इसमें हमें manually काम करना पड़ता है उसकी वजह है कि इसके sizes जो है वो different होते हैं। The lamps are then coated with the gel to prevent humidity from interacting with the salt, and then they're shrink wrapped. RM Salt ships 30 containers of products every month. Muhammad exports about 80% of his products, primarily to Western countries like the U.S., U.K., and Spain, where demand has spiked in the last decade because of the alleged health benefits. Here, there are three colors of salt: white, red, and pink. In this, the white is sodium chloride, pink is magnesium, and red is iron sulfur. 98 परसेंट तो ये सोडियम क्लोराइड ही है एन ही है जो कि नॉर्मली सी सॉल्ट भी है लेकिन इसके एडिशनली जो बेनिफिट्स हैं वो 84 मिनरल्स जो इसमें होते हैं जैसे कि कैल्शियम है मैग्नीशियम है पोटेशियम है It's such a very small percentage of the salt that makes up these minerals that you are highly unlikely to get any real benefit or any trace of them in your regular serving of salt itself. But nutritionally, it's pretty much similar to regular salt. It's also pretty similar tasting to sea salt, but others claim Himalayan salt has healing powers, whether inhaled, used in spa treatments, or in lamp form. There's a lot of different homeopathic remedies that can seem very, very appealing, but actually they're not grounded in evidence. And it's these false health claims that have driven the price up. Himalayan salt can cost up to 20 times the price of normal table salt. Normally, the price start with the pink salt pouch. Ki, wo normally, uh, ek, uh, manufacturer se wo 60 cents se shuru hoti hai. Aur ek, main 1 kg bag ki baat kar jo ke sale, sale hota hai retail markets mein, around 9, $9 dollar hota hai. But that money doesn't always make it back to the miners. They take home less than 1,500 rupees a day, not much more than the cost of this bag of Himalayan sea salt at Walmart. And those salaries have stayed the same, even though Pakistan has severed its salty relationship with India, and the pink salt is seeing growing demand abroad. Pink salt ki demand is still growing in the whole world. I don't think that it's not a loss in the market. Why? Because people are using it in the same way, and the whole world is growing in the whole world, and the whole world is growing in the whole world. Luckily, the mountain won't run out of salt anytime soon. It's estimated only about 220 million tons of salt have been excavated here. Nothing compared to the nearly 6.7 billion tons left.